as you can see, it's basically winter here. So I'm going to make this uh, quick because it's cold. Um, a little drained right now, so this might not be one of the most energetic of videos. Uh, the, you know, cranked out a, a good number of videos recently on uh, C-sharp stuff, F-sharp stuff, and Ida stuff. And the recent thing I've been doing that I really didn't expect to be as big as it's starting to turn into was uh, covering some reliability problems uh, that I, I was aware of with Ida. And there are some community members that have been pitching into that. Uh, some of these, uh, well, I'm going with my usual thing of if you direct messaged me, I'm keeping your name private. If you it was like a YouTube comment or whatever, then it's public. Some of these, like the last one I did, um, I'm not naming who that is. You can probably figure it out, but I'm still not going to uh, directly name who that is. Uh, but uh, Adam Ward has been playing around with some things. And I, I've got a few things. Um, uh, some I'm looking into. Some I have confirmed, but there are some specifics. Uh, for example, as, as it turns out, you can modify constant values, which is a huge problem and is something that actually can't be done in certain other well-engineered languages. Uh, like C-sharp, even with reflection, you cannot change constant values. But you can with Ida, and uh, only on certain architectures. You have to be on a von Neumann architecture that does not have an, an X bit or something like that. But, hey, go back inside. Um, so, pretty limited in the machines that, that can execute on, but it's still uh, my point there is to demonstrate a flaw in how constants were designed. That is ideally something that you never want to ha be an issue at all, not something you want the CPU itself to protect against and throw an exception. It should never, ever happen. But it can because of Addis design. The other thing, though, um, I have a video. It's long. I'm working on it. It's just editing here and there, but it's long on um, reviewing Adacore's extension for VS Code. And it's a mess. It's not good for many reasons. Uh, I was originally saying that the LSP seemed quite good, and that was something I was considering, uh, considering I'm apparently working on the VS Code extension I did, again, uh, was integrating their LSP into mine, even if it meant relicensing. Because at the time, I, it just seemed quite good from some initial testing me and another person did. It seemed quite good. Oh boy, I saw things that are not okay. <laughs> it's bad. But that... That warrants a video, a detailed video that covers it. Um, and another thing I wanted to cover uh, is another one in the series for the my issues with Idacore. And this one has to do with their treatment of community members. And specifically, I want to cover the case of David Tamar, who is an individual that uh, seemed to have a lot of promise and just became totally disparaged with the quality of a lot of things and how Adekor approached um, him pointing out bugs. It's absolutely disgusting, and I want to bring attention to it. That, unfortunately, is a bit of a rabbit hole.
You see, in order to cover uh, the case of David Tamar, hopefully I'm saying that right. I'm really not familiar with uh, Israeli conventions for names. I'm kind of basing that off of like it's an English name. I, I'm, I'm, I apologize if that's way off. Uh, in order to cover his case well, we have to, because there's some intermixing because of some interactions between me and him. Uh, we have to cover my case with Edicor as well. Um, it's going to be a bit for that because there's even more of a rabbit hole that I did not expect. And uh, I got to delve into some community lies and other things. And oh, that's fun. But we can cover some of my stuff right now because I just want to get some points out there right now. I'd said during my, um, my, 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 the video, the, my experience as an IDA developer of 14 years, I'd said that I used to be a, uh, commercial, uh, I was paying for their commercial support. And I was for several years. Not my first few years as a developer, but for about four or five years. Um, I'm not sure specifically. Uh, I'm more familiar of when it ended, but not exactly when I um, when I first started paying. But as part of that, you get access to the Nat Tracker, which is their special um, bug submission system. Um, understandably, since you are a paying customer, you get priority support, and that, that's reasonable. I really have no problem with that. But what I do have a problem with is when a community member, even if they are not paying, reports a bug in the software, that is affecting all of us. And why are you not taking that seriously? Why this gets into a rabbit hole is 10 years ago, and I'll pull up my Nat Tracker ticket for this. I'm going to hide the other ones and hide the, the name that I'm registered on there for. Uh, I, I got reasons for that. I'll deal with that in a future video. But I got my Nat Tracker ticket up there. I reported the issue with tabs 10 years ago. Uh, I believe it was October 11th, if I'm remembering that correctly, but it was October of 2009, 10 years ago. And it got fixed for me, real quick. Five years ago, I find out that the community release of it, it's still broken. Now, why did you fix something only for me and not for everybody else? And so for five years... I've been occasionally bringing that up, reporting that to the Attic community members, but only as a community, uh, at, at the Atticor, um employees, but only as a community member, not bringing up the fact that I used to be a commercial supporter. No progress for five years. David Tamar goes and reports it as well. And the same thing. So we're going to have some interesting stories coming up. 